Thank you. I'm actually going to move on to the next, su next subject area. By <laughs> <laughs> Only because that will give us time just to make sure we sort out the microphones for some further supplementaries on other <laughs> subjects. Uh, the next subject area is on the communications data bill. And it's from Mark Pack. And it's, are there any circumstances under which you would vote for the communications data bill or when it becomes an act? And if so, what are they? I think it's really important to remember that this bill is a draft bill, it's not a proper bill, and it's being subject, at my insistence, to the fullest, in fact, fairly unprecedented levels of scrutiny in Parliament in, by a joint committee of the House of Lords and MPs from the House of Commons. And by the way, on that, I really do want to play, pay special tribute. Uh, Julian, are you here? Julian Huppert, are you here, Julian? Are you? Anyway, Julian Hopper has been doing a brilliant job. So let's applaud him in, in his absence. Um, he's, been, he's been doing a superb job, superb job, along with Paul Strasberger, uh, in, in looking at this bill in a line-by-line -line way. And, you know, my attitude is very simple. If the, if the questions and queries and dilemmas, oh, there you are, Mark, there, um, posed by the, the, the Joint Committee are not satisfactorily answered by the Home Office, then of course it won't then become a bill or an act. It's not a point of pre-legislative, it's not a sort of, this is, I really want to assure you this, pre we are taking this pre-legislative scrutiny very seriously indeed. It's not just going through the motions. If it, if, it, if it unearths both issues of practice and principle, which I don't think are satisfactorily addressed, then the, then the matter won't proceed. I appreciate, as you said, that it's a draft bill and there's the pre-legislative scrutiny. I, my concern is that the committee, although it's got some excellent people like Julian Huppert on it, is not a Liberal Democrat committee, so the view that it comes up will not necessarily reflect Liberal Democrat views. Um, so just to push you a little bit, are there circumstances under which you know, Labour and Tory MPs on the committee are saying the bill can go ahead with some changes but which you'd still veto the bill? Well, I'm of course free to judge in my own right. Um, whether I think, and obviously I'll take advice from Julian in particular, where I think there are issues of principle or indeed workability, which kind of, irrespective of the composition, the political composition of the committee, have been properly addressed or not. I mean, look, there are, there are, there are issues of um, uh, sort of substance and technicality here, which you are much better equipped to judge on than I am, which I'm just simply not, you know, that's what you need the experts for who are coming to the committee. So, um, you know, there's this issue that you know about under the under present law, the um, police and the security services can find out when someone made a mobile telephone call uh, and for how long and to which telephone number. Right? They can't. They can't under those powers find out the content of that call, but they can find out the how, when, where. Right? And the idea on this comms data bill, that's the way it has been put forward, is that all that is happening is extending that power of how, where, when to other forms of communication by which people increasingly talk to each other, over, particularly over voice, over IP, Skype and so on. I have heard it said, but I'm just, not, you know, I'm just simply not, I'm not, I'm, not, you know, I'm not technically expert enough to know that, this, that some people say that you can't actually distinguish between the how, where and when and the content in those new forms of communication as you can with mobile or indeed fixed telephony. Now that seems to me to be a technical issue, hugely important. Hugely important, because of course if you start almost unwittingly giving the powers to the, to, to the authorities to look at content under the guise of how, where, when, then you, you, you know, that's, that's far more illiberal. So we need, but we do need a technical kind of adjudication on whether that's right. So that's a, you know, there are a lot of issues of substance. Then there are just issues of principle, of privacy, of proportionality, of this crucial balance which liberals and liberal democrats struggle with more than I think any party in British politics, which is where do you draw the line between giving the authorities the powers to go after people and apprehend people who would otherwise do as damage, and where do you draw the line and, and, and limit those powers in the name of the privacy of the individual citizen. And that's exactly the issue of principle, of liberal principle, which I will bring to bear on the work that Julian and other people are doing. 
Do you want to take some questions yep. from the auditorium on the communications data bill? Right, there's a gentleman right at the back there. Right at, right at the, yeah, at the back. My supplementary question would be, when this draft bill, and don't forget it wasn't, wasn't proposed as a draft bill, it was proposed as a bill, when it was originally proposed, you appeared on the world at one to support the principle behind the bill. It was only the next day that you came out and opposed it after a backlash from the grassroots of the Liberal Democrats. So my question is, did you actually read the bill or have any, any advice in it at all before you signed off on it? No, I don't think that's right. I really don't think it's right. Um, uh, the principles of the, the, the bill are, as I described earlier, that at the moment, under existing powers, uh, in the same way that the police and the security authorities could, under certain circumstances, uh, find out when a call was made and for what duration and to whom on fixed line telephony, legislation was then adapted with the support of Liberal Democrat MPs in Parliament to extend that power to mobile telephony, not least through the Ripper Act. The, the principles of the bill are simply that that same power needs to be extended a third time to new forms of uh, voice communication which are not captured by existing statute. That is a description of fact of the, of the, of the, of the rationale for, for the bill. Um, uh, you're right, it was at my insistence that it should be a draft bill. It was, it was right, it was my insistence that it should be um, subject to pre-legislative scrutiny, which is exactly what you'd expect on something as sensitive as this, I, forgive me, I genuinely can't, I mean, you seem to have a forensic memory of the particular interview in Oyster. My memory was that it was absolutely obvious this was incredibly sensitive, that there was an issue of principle that I've described to you which needs to be addressed one way or the other. There, there are issues of both principle and technicality, as I said to Mark, that need to be looked at and are now going to be looked at by Julian and his colleagues in the Joint Committee. Anybody else on this subject? Or Yep. Hi. Um, if we're saying that's a uh, question of principle, then why don't we give power to the police to track our mail, our snail mail, after all? Um, because if they're allowed to intercept the telephone, now you want them to intercept electronic um, data, but not the mail. No, let, let me, sorry, let me be very, really clear. We have already, as a party, for years, accepted that in order to keep us safe, it is legitimate within certain circumstances for the police and security authorities to find out who has made a telephone call with their mobile phone for, lo for how long, when and to whom, right? So not content, not interception of mail, not interception of content. That is a totally different matter. I don't think who sends a piece of paper in an envelope and to whom is, 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 is analogous at all because the thing that we've accepted as a party, there might be people who don't like it, but frankly we've accepted this for years and years and years, is that there are legitimate circumstances in which people who are employed to keep us safe think it's absolutely vital to be able to go after some very nasty people to know when they made a call, to whom, and where, without snooping on the content. Now, that is the issue of principle, is do you extrapolate that yes or no to other technologies? There are very, very serious reservations being raised about whether you can or should do that at all. As I've made clear earlier, if the, pre pro if the process of pre-legislative scrutiny bears those reservations out, then of course it won't proceed. But I, I don't know, I, I don't know what, I, it seems to me that's, that's the kind of reasonable, evidence-based way about going about these kind of difficult, difficult issues. I wasn't talking about mm. content, I was talking about tracking the mail, not necessarily opening it. And anyway, if someone who's really want to hide what they do, it's very easy, even with those powers, to go around it just with a VPN. With? VPN. Yeah, yeah. Is, there's a very easy way to, no, no, that, for people that really and that's exact, have something to yeah, hide. And that's exactly one of the issues that, uh, that Julian Huppert and others are looking at, is are we actually now in a world where, where and look, 
I, you know, I'm just simply not, I'm just simply not technically proficient enough, and I should suspect there are very, very few people in this audience who are, to be able to answer a simple question, whether the principles which apply to mobile telephony and voice and fixed line telephony can be applied to other forms of voice communication at all. Now, I read articles and others, people saying, it's impossible. We're in a different world. You can't do it. It's not technically, well, fine, let's find that out. That's what these guys are here for in the Joint Committee. And I think we should let them get on with their work. Thanks.